Hi YouTube, this is a mini kiln that I bought on eBay. Um, it's made by a company called Horst Erlig. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'll put it in the description in case you want to um, look it up and get one yourself. So I think this cost me about £50, something like that. Um, they can go a little bit more than that, but um, I always look out for a bargain. So I'm going to show you some enamelling today. Uh, enamelling is really good fun. These little mini kilns get up to a really high temperature. So what I use are these little copper rivets. Um, and I bought this massive box of copper rivets at a car boot sale for like £5. Um, they just give you like a flat kind of disc that you can put um, enamel beads into. Uh, they've got like long rods on as well, but I can always snip those down afterwards. Um, so what I do is put them on these little racks so these yeah these are just racks that go in the kiln um, just really thick gauze basically and then you can see I just arrange beads on the top of them so these are little glass or enamel beads again you can buy these on eBay you can see all my colors in there these are my mini tweezers and what I do is I just grab a bead like that and position it on and this, I mean, this rack here of 16 uh, probably took me between two and three hours to arrange those beads on there. So it is a bit time consuming, but I find it really good fun. It's a fun process. Right, this is the um, rod that I use for actually putting the um, enamel discs into the kiln. So you just position it like that. And obviously the kiln would be really... Uh, red hot at this point and you'll see that later on in the video and then I just place it in like that and then the uh, door of the kiln goes down and they fire and when they're done you open the kiln again take it out put it down uh, probably not on a wooden floor but you'll see that later as well so here's some discs that I made already um, various patterns and you can see they're really nice bright colours this is what I love about it like when they fire and they all kind of melt in together all the colours right so you can see here I've put the kiln on and there's just a bit of heat coming from it initially so this is a temperature gun a laser gun so what you do is press the button so you can see here my floor is registering like 25 degrees C 26 degrees C and then uh, you'll see I'll fire this inside here okay this has probably only been on for about a minute and you can see here it's at 344 degrees already okay a little bit later on look you can start to see the orange glow coming from within the kiln when I do the um, thermometer now you can see um, the floor in front of it um, registers 40 uh, and then 335 and this is just the outside door Okay, a little bit later still, and if you look carefully, you'll be able to see heat waves sort of shooting across my floor here. Um, so it's getting a lot hotter now. In fact, I think this was about, yeah, five minutes later. You can see, like, the outside of the door is glowing much brighter orange now. Um, I used the um, thermometer gun on this again, and it's reading 442.9 degrees C, so very hot. Okay, literally only about a minute later you can see it's much brighter in the kiln. Okay, so I've got these um, these gloves. These are welding gauntlets. Um, and I just put one on my left hand. Um, just because I'm going to be opening the kiln door. And, you know, it gets obviously pretty hot by the kiln door. So, just to be on the safe side, I'll put these gloves on. Right, um, I'm just going to show you with the heat gun um, what the temperature reads inside here. You can see it's really glowing, look at that. So when I click on this, it just reads high. Um, so on these particular thermometers, anything over a thousand degrees uh, is high. It's probably a lot hotter than that. Okay, so I'm going to grab this rack now. I've got to be really kind of careful with this because obviously the beads are just um, all balanced on there. <laughs> and you can imagine like going to all that sort of two or three hours work, putting all the beads on. And then picking this up, not being careful, and it just goes, you know, you just drop them everywhere, um, would be a nightmare. So, 
I've got to put this in very slowly and very kind of cautiously. Um, but having said that, you don't want your um, kiln to cool down too much. I think at this point it's got so hot actually that it's very difficult to get it to cool down. So I think you're okay. But uh, I just, uh, this is always the panicky bit because you, you don't want to spill the beads everywhere. Right, they're in. So, phew. Okay, I then look into the kiln door and it's very hard for you to see on this video obviously but um, what I can make out are the bumps from the different beads and when the beads start to melt they obviously flatten and only when they're completely flat do I take them out of the kiln like this. Um, now when I'm doing this watch very carefully and you'll see the sort of molten looking um, copper and you'll see like the colours very quickly start to come up so when you first pull them out they're a completely different color look can you see it's like red hot all of the copper there and you can see it starts to um cool instantly now watch all these colors because when you first look at them a lot of them look quite muted i'll just show you here so that's reading 453 degrees on the discs there so <laughs> still really hot so you don't want to touch them at this point um and yeah, you can see like the colours as you look at them over the next sort of minute or so um, as they cool, all the colours brighten up. So things like, you know, the reds that look really still quite dark, they start to come up much brighter. It's just really nice. Uh, it's one of my favourite bits of the process actually watching this happen. Um, just seeing all the bright colours coming through. It's really cool and also you know you never know what you're going to get because all of the beads obviously melt in together and um, yeah so quite often random things happen you know roughly what you're going to get but sometimes you get like happy accidents that happen where something comes through and it just looks lovely so this is the first rack of 16 for this video um, I'm going to do another rack of 16 in a minute um, but you can see that I've left this all on like real time so you can see everything brightening up all those oranges and reds are starting to brighten now and um, this is much more like what they're going to be like um, right another thing that happens is at the back of the copper discs um, where the copper is kind of uh, oxidized or something um, with the air you get this kind of powdery gray layer on the back of the discs and as they cool um, you can't hear it because I've taken the sound off the video, but you get this kind of crackling noise as the um, the kind of grey layer kind of breaks off the back of the discs. Um, and it does make a little bit of a mess. It's kind of like sort of black ashy kind of material. Um, right, this is another rack kind of all laid up ready to go. This is how I do it. Just put them in with the little rods in there, line them all up. Uh, ready for new beads yeah I'll show you what that grey ashy kind of stuff looks like on this next lot in a minute but okay so you can see I've laid out some beads again I've just done kind of stripey ones and um, circular ones for this firing so we'll bung these in and then uh, see what we get again look I've let it heat up to red hot again being very careful again <laughs> This bit is always really scary. I just know one day I am just going to, like the whole thing is just going to flip off or something and I'll have to start again for sort of two or three hours putting beads on. I mean, a lot of people would probably find those two or three hours quite tedious, but I find it quite relaxing really. It's not something you want to do if you're not um, particularly happy with doing fiddly things because it is pretty fiddly. Right, let's get these out. Again, watch watch as these cool. Whoa, look how red hot they are. You definitely wouldn't want to put them straight down onto a wooden floor. So again, look how dull they look when they first come out. A lot of the colours, so kind of muted. So you can see here I've gone for like um, black and a colour, um, striped. And then I've gone for um, white and the colour in circles um, that will obviously show up more as they um, cool. There were also a couple at the front here in the middle um, that didn't fire particularly well 
uh, previously there were some gaps and things in them so if you ever fire one and it's looking a bit rubbish you can always add more beads to it especially to fill gaps and things and then you can just put them back in again and refire them this green and white one for example in the foreground and um, you can see the white beads haven't fully melted in so that's one that I might end up refiring again in the future just to get it to be flatter on the top surface. Quite often the ones that are closest to the kiln door, where it's not quite as hot, um, they don't melt quite so well. Um, or maybe I just didn't leave it in quite long enough. But I'll, um, like I say, I can always refire that one, so I'm not too fussed about it. But you can see, right, the colours are starting to come through here. Nice and rich again. Um, and I'll arrange these in with all my other ones that I've done already. And I think they should end up looking pretty good. Okay, after I think they've cooled enough, I normally just get a, a little pair of pliers like this and just lift them up and I just rest them on the floor like this. So this is the oxidising kind of layer or whatever it is that comes off the back of the discs. You can see it's just a very flaky, really, really thin layer just comes off the back. Um, so look, once I've rested them all on the floor, um you can see that <laughs> you can see it is quite messy and I, I just dust pan and brush it all up afterwards but um you can see that how thin the layers are um that there's a whole sort of thin disc there that's just come straight off the back and just fallen off so yeah very crumbly um so look if i use the thermometer on this you can see they're all sort of roughly 30 degrees so i know they're kind of safe to touch i mean i'm still a little bit cautious at first but um, once i've checked their okay temperature i just go and just kind of brush off just using my thumb all that kind of ashy layer okay and then i just use a pair of wire cutters just to cut down the um the copper rod on the rivet just because in my drawer my drawers are quite thin and i've got these are all like in thin foam so if I can just trim them down a bit I can just push them into the foam and just keep them in place like I say one day I might end up taking those rods off completely I don't know yet but for the moment as a sort of display in a drawer it's quite a good way of doing it just to push them down into some foam so here's some that I've I've made holes in this already so that I can push these straight in so look, I've got a row there that I did that are just fairly plain um, colours, just with a black dot in the middle. And I'm just putting these new ones down, like matching the colours in a row down here to give this kind of rainbow effect. Okay, and then the same with the ones that were with the white circles on as well. I'll do that. Okay, so they all look nice together, and then just do a bit of rearranging here. Get those in the drawer with all the others, and yeah, not bad. So that drawer's full now. Um, those rivets that I've got, I've got like a thousand rivets in that tub, so I don't know if I'll end up do <laughs> doing a thousand of these. Um, and if I do, I don't know where I'll end up putting them. But um, you can see. I've obviously spent quite a few hours doing these already if they take sort of two or three hours for every 16 that I've done. Um, this, yeah, you can see the amount of time. But I think it's worth it. They look amazing. You know, when you open the drawers, you're hit, just hit with all this colour and pattern. Is it art? Who knows? Um, a lot of art is pattern making. Uh, I just love them anyway. So hit subscribe if you want to see more things like this in the future. Um, check out my videos of my portfolios and other artwork and sculptures and thanks for watching.